Five. I see there's already comments there, Christian. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I'm standing here. If we both stand in the sun, ah, feeling good. Oh, it's beautiful. You come beautiful, over so man. that. There you go. So we can't see anything. I see there's already comments there uh, that we can't read, but I want to introduce because I know we're a little bit late. This is Christian from Bike About Tours, tour guide, been in Paris for 17 years. That's right, yeah. Loves, loves, loves the Versailles Gardens. Uh, Especially on days like today. That's the thing. We have come on the most beautiful day. You can see in the background the, the sheep in the fields and the uh, the heads of royalty, <laughs> something like that. But what we figured we'd do is that uh, Christian's, there's a map right over here. Christian's going to tell us the plan and we're going to go live for the next, what do you reckon? Maybe 45 minutes? Yeah. 45 minutes or so. I just got a text message from my own grandma saying she's <laughs> watching. This is awesome. a historic day. Hello, grandma. Grandma says that we're live. We're Let back. me know if it's, if it's not working. I think someone tried to call me. Um, <laughs> But I don't actually know what happened, but uh, for those of you who are just joining, we're in Palace of Versailles Gardens with Christian. I'm going to turn the, uh, also, uh, lovely Lena's here for the ride. Uh, so Christian, walk yes. me through what the plan is for today. Well, and where are we? Firstly, Oliver, yeah, we, we're here, okay. Um, these are the giant grounds of the gardens of Versailles. Now, kind of what we spoke about earlier there's over 2,000 acres of grounds and gardens here which is just incredible most people come to Versailles and they can't cover half of it on right. foot um, thank thankfully today we've got what have we got to get around we got three bicycles that's true yeah, because Christian runs bike about tours it's all in the, this is something I'll say uh, once or twice it's all in the description below if you want to figure out how this all works <laughs> bikeabouttours.com um, but we'll point out first on this map show us yes. like Put into context for us, yep. where's the palace? So the palace is here. Okay. Back here. Okay. Okay. That's this is the actual chateau, the main building of the big palace. Yep. And these are all the kind of extended buildings of the palace there. Right. So behind the palace, away from the town, are the grounds, is all this. Um, and you've promised all, all two thousand hectares for our viewers today. Uh, nearly, yeah. We'll, we'll see a lot of. We have the bikes, so that'll that'll help us. So where were we just looking there? That's that there. Okay, so that's the sheep, uh, the sheep fields that we're looking at over there, right? That's right. Yeah, and um, they call the gate we just came through the the gate of the queen, the queen's gate. There we go. Yeah. Um, so Someone's come... stealing the crown jewels again. <laughs> We've come through the queen's gate, and we're actually going to ride all the way over here. Yep. Down to join the Grand Canal. Okay. Um, We'll talk a bit more, more about the canal once we get there. Um, from the canal, though, you get a great view of these kind of inner gardens and the palace. Okay, excellent. So, uh, we'll get on the bikes to get down to the bits that Christian just mentioned. I want to see these comments that people have already sent in because I encourage everybody to send questions for you okay. to test your knowledge and your anecdotes. Uh, but let's just see what's happening here. Uh, Brian says his coffee's ready. Do we want one? <laughs> You asked the right guy. Great, yeah. uh, Christian <laughs> runs uh, the Peloton Cafe as well, which if you saw on Instagram this morning, that's where uh, we met and where I regularly go for coffee. So that's a good filter coffee to start the, that's what start we had. the day. Yeah. What are you having, Brian? Let us know. Catherine says, I'll have one. Cindy yeah. Green's watching uh, in Chicago. That Fantastic. time can't be good. No, it's a late night maybe in Chicago, yeah. Uh, okay, what else have we got? A lot of talk about coffee. I've been... Uh, a lot of talk about coffee and not a lot of talk about Versailles, but here we go. People are watching in uh, countries all over the world. That's a good start. Shall we jump it on is. the bikes? Let's do and it. get started? Okay. So I'm going to film as we cycle and it's uh, it could be tricky. And Christian, if you ride next to me, you can talk as we go. What do you think? Sounds good, yeah. Okay. Is this my one? So here's the bikes that we're riding today. And uh, as I said before, when uh, I film forwards, it doesn't seem to pick up the sound. So Christian will be talking to my... Was that... Oh, that's mine. No, that's yours. That's mine. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, guys, we're heading towards, for those who are joining, uh, we're heading towards the Grand Canal, did you say? Yep. Towards the bottom of the Grand Canal. Okay. This is the first walk show done on bicycles. Is this hard to feel? Uh, it, so far, so good. <laughs> so, Jim McPherson in Chicago says it's 4 a.m. there. Best way to start the day. That's awesome. It's Do you think minus 30 as well. Yeah, geez. So uh, we've got the stabilizer, so it should be all right to, uh, to record as we go. I won't be able to film you like that and talk, but I can show you. But uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, the significance of this place that we are. First, imagine some people watching maybe have never even heard of it before. Yep, so this grand um, kind of grand park that we're in, 
this was really the playground of the kings at Versailles. Um, Louis the Fourteenth, you know, who they call the Sun King, he was the guy who had the vision to make this the most amazing garden in the world. Um, and actually, it still kind of is that today, you know, 300 years later. Um, but we'll see as we get a little further down just what he did to make this just so amazing. We got a, a comment come in. I didn't see the name of it because I am cycling. Uh, but someone said it would make a great drone shot, what we're doing. It would. And actually, this is the only place um, around Paris you can use drones. Ah, because that was their follow-up question. Can you yes. even use drones? You can indeed, yeah. Paris, no, but Versailles, you can. Are we going to go up on that uh, track or on the road? Let's stay on the road. Okay. So it's going to be, it's impossible for me to change the camera around so it's on us because I only got one hand. Uh, but, uh, oh wow, look at this. But you guys have to put comments to let us know that you can hear us all right so that uh, we don't spend 45 minutes doing a show you can't hear. Just let us know the sound is fine and you can hear us both with the wind and the cycle. Um, but Christian, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Wait, hang on. Oh, goodness me. Whoa, okay. Lilo, all right back there? <laughs> There's another one coming up, but that's all right. Okay, so talk, you, we can't see you, but we can hear you, I think. No one's written sound is fine yet, but... Okay. So who are you? No, Everything is perfect, says Fitzy Golf Pro. <laughs> perfect. Um, yeah, so my name's Christian. Um, I met Oliver. How long have we known each other, Oliver? A few At years now? At least three, three years, years, I'd say. Yes, yeah, so we've known each other three years. Um, I've been in Paris um, about 17 years. Um, I came over as, as a very naive American student. From which state? Uh, from, from, uh, from Florida. Right, okay. Yeah, kind of the Tampa, sunny coast of, uh, of Florida. Um, but yeah, over the years we, we've set up um, a bike tour company. We always thought life is better on a bike. Some would say it's really good. Ah. <laughs> that was a sympathy laugh, wasn't Thanks, it, Christian? <laughs> um, yeah, so we set up a, a bike tour company. It's true that we always thought Paris and Versailles, you just get to see so much more than the typical tourist on a bike. Um, and that's reason, really the reason we set this up, um, to kind of help people experience something a bit different. So speak really loud now that you're on the front, okay. uh, as in twice as loud, I think. But uh, explain that, what, uh, what you just said about, because uh, a lot of people who are walking, even just the yeah. distance we've covered would be uh, too much. Yes. So. As we kind of said, 2,000 acres of grounds and gardens, it's all amazingly beautiful. You want to see it all. Um, but walking, you know, you do the palace, you do the gardens. We're actually going to turn left up here. Okay. We'll let that car go past on the cobblestones here. But yeah, you do the palace, you do the gardens. You know, after a few hours, you're getting pretty fatigued if you're walking. Right. But on the bikes, you know, you can, you can do all this stuff in half a day, you know, which is which is great, I mean, that's the side. Okay, lead the way, Christian. So, let's see if I can, oh. So the plan is, guys, uh, the, let's see if I can turn this around with my nose. Oh, I did. So the plan is, uh, now I can see your comments and you can hear us a little bit better. The plan is we're gonna ride between some of the interesting places to see, and uh, we're gonna stop and get off the bikes and show you, so it won't all be, uh, it won't all be us riding. There in the background is the co-host of the honeymoon season. Hi. You're on camera. Hi. That's Lena, lovely Hi. Lena. For you guys who've never met her before, uh, she can. Corinne and uh, Brian say hi. Hi. Corinne in capitals. <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cycle up towards Christian, and uh, he's gonna talk to us as well. Christian, you're going too fast. But also, so I see there's closing in on 20 people watching which is great because I know uh, it's mostly Americans that watch these things and they're all asleep but I, I feel like it's a lot of Australians watching so if you have a friend who you think would be interested in this tour send him a little text message and say hey Oliver and Christian are live you want to go to the Versailles Palace Oliver's grandma's watching sound good Christian that's that's great so now we can feel oh, look, if we can you see yourself <laughs> I can <laughs> so how long have you been coming to Versailles so um, we set up kind of the, the bike rides out here about 10 years ago now, which is kind of hard to believe. Um, and yeah, just by, by biking out here, we just, we, we figured out that you could just do so much more. And we've actually discovered a lot more stuff ourselves that we never knew existed. Like what? Versailles. So 
um, we discovered this area that early on we had never been to, Queen's Village, Mar actually Mary Antoinette. She built this kind of pent-like village out in the forest so she can milk cows and, you know, her goats and all the rest like a commoner. Um, so she built this to kind of have this little mini Disney-like village in the forest. But it's way out there, so you got to ride quite a distance. So we initially planned to go out there until uh, we figured it's closed. Uh, yeah, it's closed for another kind of hour and a half or two, so we might not make it out there, but um, we're going to see some cool stuff here, though. We'll just go this way. Lena says, can you still milk cows, Christian? Uh, you I think you have to pay extra for that. You have to pay extra for that, he says. I, I'm gonna, I think we're gonna pop off the bikes for a second. Are we, are we still cycling for a bit? Yeah, we can just pop over here. Okay, I'm gonna go no hands and change the thing around. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, ready? So this is what I just saw. And the internet is surprisingly good out here. I hope we don't have any problems. And there, there's Christian. There's lovely Lena. Lovely Lena, if people are watching and haven't been listening to the podcast, wonder why I'm calling my own wife Lovely Lena. It was one of the, it was one of the podcast listeners, uh, Leader, who came up with it. Uh, Crin says, gotta go back to sleep. Ah, oh, Crin, shame to see you go. Um, and I, all the other comments that have come through, I haven't seen them because I was filming Christian, but I'll get back to them. So put your questions. Christian's been doing this for 10 years. He knows the Garden of Versailles like the back of his hand, and he will answer. He's told me he'll answer anything. Okay, wow. Oh, the sun, the light is so good. It's a bit like the sound of music, guys, no? Okay. Whoa. Okay. So which way, you, you can direct me now, Christian. Which way should I be filming? Well, yeah, so this way first, maybe. Um, and you come over to my shoulder. So what are we looking at? So it's true, we're looking at the back side of the palace. That's the back of the, the, the massive chateau. It's hard from actually this angle to see how kind of immaculate and huge it is. But, um, but it is a great view, nonetheless, looking through the, the inner gardens of, of the palace. And is that, uh, so you have to, which, so talk, walk me through where we're going to go roughly so yeah, I can so get a, uh, which We're going to go back this direction. Yeah. So, so we're looking, um, now we're looking actually down through the Grand Canal. Right which Louis XIV built. Um, it actually stretches to the very end um, is over two kilometers. So it's, what is that, 1.2 miles, something like it's that. It's okay, because it's mostly yeah. Australians right. watching. We they can do kilometers yeah, yeah. today. Cool. <laughs> Although so, you are American, you've got a pretty good handle on the kilometers. I've forgotten what, what everything is, I think, at this stage. But um, anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to head all the way to the end of the canal, I think. I yep. think that's our, that our plan, really if good. we can cycle that far. Um, then we're going to kind of bend around and see some of the other buildings that are out in the forest. So this is the typical, well, I, so I came to Versailles about five years ago, uh, and I'm going to read your comments right after this. Paul C says goodbye, he's got to go to the right. doctors. Hope you're alright Paul. Uh, and I'm going to get these questions in a sec, but I think a lot of people that yes. come to the, uh, the palace, they go up there, they maybe walk down as far as where we are, and then instead of going that way, yes. they probably turn back up and go yep. back in the palace. And both are both are really really beautiful. Um, the inner gardens close to the palace are the kind of more manicured ones. Um, it's funny they call those the the French gardens, the ones that are like kind of an art form, right? Really manicured. Um, you've also got fountains over there as well, which they turn on at, at on certain days. This back here is very wild, um, trees everywhere, and they call that. What do you think they call that? Wild tree lane. No, they call that the English gardens. <laughs> so that's the French, very manicured and orderly, and these are the English, very crazy. That's great. So, if yeah. my uh, if my English grandma is watching, you're gonna love it. Although, yeah. it's not really a uh, flowery season, is it? No, it's not, unfortunately. Which the 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 benefit of that is that there's no tourists really around here. Uh, the downside is that there's you're not gonna see snowdrops and and raindrops on roses and. Whiskers on kittens and no. all that kind of stuff. As you normally would. As you normally yeah, yeah. would. <laughs> um, but are, there, are we able to cycle to where those horses are? No, so this is the furthest to this side. We can. We okay, can so I'm going to have to zoom in on them. Unfortunately, yeah. the lights. But if you can see that, so that's a fountain, right? It is. Um, and these fountains um, were all here during the times of the kings, so like 16, 1700s. Um, one of my favorite random facts about the fountains is that they actually had to redirect the river Seine from Paris to feed the water into these fountains. Really? 
which is just crazy um, what the Kings did. Um, they also, for the fountains, they, they weren't all running all the time, but the King thought they were. So if the King was walking around the gardens, um, they would have people at the various fountains blowing whistles. Oh, the King's coming, the King's coming, turn it on, turn it on. I love it. And so Louis XIV thought they were always running, but they weren't. Does the same thing happen at the Peloton Cafe when you walk in, all the stuff are like, Christian's coming, quick, yep, they clean do, up. Yeah. <laughs> Similar thing. Yeah. So I said I'd answer some questions. It's so hot here that I think it's, uh, we're gonna take the jackets off. I saw Brian said it's a cracking day. Thanks. <laughs> uh, but some of those comments that were coming through, and I hope there's some questions too. Uh, okay, it's done one of, uh, it's still recording, but it's done one of these temporary freezes that I've learned to deal with now. Okay, it's back on again, I can see the comments. Uh, I think it's good to do the chateau and the inner gardens on one day, says Catherine, and then the park, the tree and on, and the ammo on another day. Do you agree with that? I'll tell you what, if you've got a lot of time in, in the area, absolutely, because there's so much here. Um, yeah, if you've only got one day, then it's good to get out here early. Um, again, on the bikes, it's great because you can you can you can do it all in one day. But um, but yeah, it's good to get out here early. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick fire question round before we get on because yes. there's, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so you got to answer in, in quick okay. fire. Ready? Yep. Jani says we look alike. Oh really? Oh, that's the first time anyone said huh. that to us. T Bab says great tour. Does Peloton offer electric bike tours? Uh, we do have some electric bikes. Um, that'll have to be for a different day because we the only place we have electric bikes is out in the Champagne region, and we do a tour oh. out there. In the That's something I've been wanting to do with you guys for a long time. We We've been talking about that for about three years. That might be the next live video. That would be awesome. It will. We should totally do that. Yep. Uh, okay, great. let's see. More, more, more. Uh, Jim McPherson, a regular viewer and Patreon supporter. How similar does it all look today as compared to when it was created? Huh, that's a really good question. That is a good one. Um, I, I would say, aside from a few cafes that they've put out here, in that random kind of trolley thing that went by yeah, behind right. us. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty similar. Um, I might even say now it's less opulent than it was. Yeah, right. Um, the canal behind us, which we'll ride down, um, Louis XIV wanted that to look like a, a little Venice. So he actually had um, gondolas um, going yeah. round with you know the guys driving them around. So it was it was it was a playground for the for the royals. Great um, question, Jim. Thanks, Jim. I love these questions. There was more, there was more. We're quick fire rounding it. Uh, uh, Antoine says, what do you think of the mise en eau they sometimes do at the Neptune fountain? I found it a bit anticlimactic. Yeah, I well... I don't know what that is. Maybe you can explain. I have no idea. Well, it's, it's interesting with the... I don't know if this answers the question, but um, it's, it's funny with Versailles. I think they, they call it the musical fountain show. That's kind of how they, they publicize it in, in English. Um, which the first time I came out, I was like, a fountain show. Oh, it's going to be like Las Vegas. You know, there's going to be music. Thing, right? There's going to be, you know, fireworks and lights. All Celine time. Dion on a gondola. Totally. Yeah, yeah that's really what I expected. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but when I came out, I was like, oh, okay, you know. Um, so definitely not quite as grand as, as that. Um, but they definitely are very beautiful. And when they're all on with the music, it is, is, it's nice. And, um, Oh, more questions, help? more questions. Yeah. Uh, do you have a bike with trainer wheels for 60-year-old novice riders? No, we don't, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Um, no. Uh, okay, I think we've caught up with the comments. How similar? Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, we've got up. Doing it all one day is hard. Morning. Okay, good. Every, everything's caught up. This is a walk show, after all. We need to keep moving. Let's, let's go. We've got a long way to go. I'm doing the... I'm taking the jacket off. Can you hold that? Sure. In fact, if you give a... A pan of everything because those yep. trees are so beautiful, and I'm gonna I'm gonna derobe in the background. Um, which is my bike? I'm putting this in your jacket. Oh yeah, I do see another question though. Um, talking about Louis the Fourteenth um, putting battleships out on the canal and watching fake battles. That's very true. He did do that. That didn't sound like a question. That sounded like a statement. <laughs> I think he said, didn't ah, Louis XIV. Okay, fair enough. Okay, I've got, I've got you. <laughs> Great panning. Okay, so we're going to head this way. And at the moment, uh, to keep you in the loop, Christian, there's 20 people watching, which okay. isn't as many as yesterday, but the Americans are asleep. That's and true. they will be watching on replay. This woman here, <laughs> look at that. She's just sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, but still, as I said uh, yesterday and the day before, if you had 20 people, Christian, show up to your birthday party, you'd be pretty happy about that, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I don't even know 20 people. Exactly. All right, which way are we going forwards? Um, we're going back this way. All right. Yeah. Panning on the shoes, says Fitzy Golf Pro. I assume, I assume he means Lena's shoes. What? Yeah, right. No, don't. 
own. They're not my own brand. They're not Lena's shoes. They're just Doc Martens, aren't they? All right, shall we? Okay. So I take it through the lack of uh, complaints, that means that the sound's working well. How many people does it take to maintain it today, says Cindy? Uh, the number of people, I'm not 100% sure, um, but the cost is just massive. The cost to maintain the grounds, the gardens, the chateau. Um... You know what, what uh, one anecdote that you didn't get a chance to say? I don't know if you know the answer, Christian, <laughs> but how many people used to live up in that chateau? Wait, I'm going to turn it around again. Oh, sh no, that was dangerous. Hang on, I'm going to turn it. No, no, I'm not going to turn it. How many people used to live in there at one point? So, that is a really random question. Um, <laughs> it's true that I know the answer. Um, they said at the height of the, of the time of the kings, you had about 7,000 people living in the chateau. And the reason, one reason for that is that the king actually would bring rich aristocrats from all over the country, all over France, to live for a time in the palace. And basically, the general reason, so he could have his eye on everyone. Right. <laughs> um, he kept his enemies pretty close, living in the chateau. But he actually gave them all very menial jobs and tasks. So you would have someone folding napkins or cleaning cutlery or, you know, fetching, you know, water basins or whatever. Um, but they all had to do that and they all wanted to be close to the king, so they did. Which, which king are we talking? So Louis the Fourteenth. Hang on, was, wait, wait, Christian, yeah. I'm going to film you again. Sorry. Because, no, no, because someone said the sound's the best it's been all week. I'm just going to stop the bike. And I think you talk, speak louder again, just in case, but, um, okay, so the camera's on you. Let's do, this is a test. There's a hear what you say at all. Okay. So give us a 30 second rendition of which you're talking about. <laughs> and you guys commenting at home, you have to comment whether you can hear him. Okay. Let's go. So yeah, so it's Louis XIV that really built 80, 90% of Versailles. It was his vision to make this the most amazing palace in, in Europe. Um, Louis XIV, he was a, he was all about power. Um, he wanted everyone to kind of look to him as the godfather of Europe. Um, he actually named himself the Sun King um, because I always thought because everything revolved around him. Um, his, his bedroom faced the, the rising sun um, and he was, he was obsessed with power. So um, that's another reason he had so many people living there, really that he could kind of order around really inside the palace. So the, uh, that was very interesting, and thank you for that. And the, the sound, uh, the, four people commented and all said different things. Someone said they could hear you perfectly, sound someone sucks. said faint, and someone said uh, a bit too soft. So we, we, we won't do too much filming like that. We'll keep it, uh, we'll okay. film together. Everything all right back there, Lena? Oh yeah, I'm doing okay. well. So now we're entering uncharted territory for, for me. I've never been anywhere this way, and it got cold again. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. You want your scarf? No, nah, I'm okay. And T Bab just said, yes, we can hear. So I want you guys, uh, while we're riding along this little bit, to tell us where you're listening from today, where you're watching from. I'm intrigued. See who can be the most exotic out of you all, and you must tell the truth, of course. I know, I know there's a Victoria, Australia is there, and Chicago. What else have we got? And tell me, Christian. Uh, What's the deal with these little plants? They're quite beautiful. I don't know, these look new actually. I think they've just planted these. My grandma would know what they are. Yeah. Are you still watching grandma? Send me a message. Deborah's watching from Virginia. Wow. wow. It's the other side of the world, Christian. Yeah, it is. So tell me about um, today. Is there a lot of people, uh, you know, like during the French Revolution, everyone was like, ah, oh, down with the king, down with the, down with the royal family. Yep. Do you think today people still think uh, th th there's too much money going into a place like this? Uh, that's a good question. Um, after the revolution, um, there was a French king. He was actually the last French king called Louis Philippe. And I always remember that king because where we have our office is on the Rue Pont Louis Philippe. Anyway. Um, that's the Peloton Cafe. You guys <laughs> must go there for a coffee. It's one of my favorite. Wow, well, I think absolutely. Yeah. Um, but no, th that last king wanted actually Versailles um, to become a museum to the glories of France. And what you, when are we talking about now? Like, this is around 1830. Okay. Yeah. And um, he really set it up as a museum, yeah, to kind of, for the history of France. Um, they've changed it a bit today because now it's basically 
the bedrooms and the it's it's really set up the way that the royals had it when they lived here. So. Um, and Brian, uh, Brian asks you, does the chateau or the grounds get? I think it said hired out very often. Uh, they actually do um, for, of course, millions of euros. Um, Beyonce had a, um, a wedding party here. <laughs> oh, Beyonce. Three or, three or four years ago. Is this yeah. when she came to film in the Louvre as well? I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, so you do get that from time to time. You get a lot of uh, movies filmed out here. Sure, there's that. There's films. the Netflix uh, the Netflix Versailles show, which I haven't watched yet. Yeah. Have you watched it? I have, yeah. Any good? We actually met one of the guys that worked on it. Um, oh, cool. And he said some was done on a sound stage, <laughs> but um, ah. a lot was done here. Typical Hollywood. Yeah. This is really nice out here. It's a great area to picnic as well. If you come out on a nice day like this. Tell me that you're going to surprise me with the news that you brought a packed picnic for us. I should have, yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. Lena might have one back there, but. That's, that's likely. I have a tiny, tiny, tiny one. I can see a plane taking off in the distance over there. It's actually a little airport. Can you guys see that? I can't zoom, obviously. Yeah. Where's the next stop, Christian? Um, so what I reckon we do, we have two options, and all of our like you choose because you know you're the big cheese. No, we'll let the viewers choose. Okay, we'll let them choose. Okay, yeah. better. So we can ride all the way to the end of the canal right. with the view back on all the grounds, or we can ride over to the to the the Trianon village with all the um, the old. Um, smaller palaces that they built out here in the forest. Okay, there you go. What we're gonna do guys is I'm gonna base the answer of what we do on the first three comments that say the same thing. So it's canal or palace. The Trianon palaces. Trianon, okay. And both are really close. So, so Trianon says Fitzy Golf Pro. Cindy says Village. That counts as the same answer. Yeah. Uh, I need one more. And there was a question in there too. Traffic is picking up here, isn't it? Yeah, right? <laughs> and I got a text uh, from Fiji saying someone's watching in Fiji. Trianon says Jim McPherson, the choice has been made All for right. us. The choice has been made. I'm going to turn the camera around again. Oh, we might have to hop off your bike though. Why is that? Because it's like a, um, you'll see when we get up there, it's kind of this ramp that's hard to get up. But... All the comments, <laughs> Grandma commented with Palace as well. <laughs> There's Lena in the background. Grandma, I hope you're enjoying your first ever walk show. I've been doing these for for two years now, so I hope you become a regular watcher now that they're on YouTube. I don't think Grandma has Facebook. Okay. Fair enough. Yep. Um, Facebook's kind of old, old school. You know? It's a bit old school. But so all you guys who are joining uh, for the first time ever, uh, including my grandma, um, what I'm doing is I call it a walk show. It's like a talk show, but usually you walk. Today we're cycling, and I get an interesting person from around Paris, like Christian, ahead of me, and I, uh, well, I show the I show the marvels of the city. And this particular week, I'm showing the seven wonders of Paris, and Christian agreed to come along for the um, for the Versailles part of it, right? And usually I do all this stuff behind a paywall. But uh, for this week, I'm opening up for everybody. You know, a bit more fun. Get everybody involved. That's right. Yeah. Get the grandmas of the world to watch. Totally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but what are we doing now? Uh, so we're yeah, we're just gonna go over kind of into this gate here um, on the other side, and um, we're gonna enter an area that used to be called centuries ago um, the village du, du Trianon, and it was actually a village of houses, people that just lived out in this part of of, of France um, when the king, when Louis the Fourteenth wanted to build his grounds, he had to do something with this village. So legend has it is that he did pay off the residents to leave and build houses elsewhere, but you have some historians who think he just pretty much just annexed it and told them to get out. So. <laughs> well, that's, that's rather interesting indeed. Yeah. And are we gonna leave the bikes here or are we gonna take them we in? We can take them in, yeah. Okay. Um, but um, he built these, these other two palaces out here in the grounds for I different can, purposes, we'll see that. I can see one. Yeah. That's one of them right there, isn't it? It is okay. indeed. Yeah. So how should we do this? Should I? So we can walk. With the bikes. And I think there was a question there for you as well. Uh, do you have bike tours at other local chateaus such as Vaux le Vicomte or Fontainebleau? Ah, that, I would love to, to be honest. Um, those spots are amazing. I would love to do those on bikes. No, we haven't started those. Versailles is probably the easiest to get to. Yeah. Um, and also with the biking, um, they allow bikes in this part. So this is this is the only place at this stage. But um, yeah, those other ones. Fontainebleau is amazing. Well, we have got two comments to make uh, slightly separate. In the background is uh, Lena trying to hide, but I think, I think, are you Instagramming stuff yes, in the background? So if you guys follow, look at 
Parisian postcards, you can see oh, the behind the scenes. Maybe people are watching on the replay and they can check it out. Parisian postcards, not linked below. But Christian, I was surprised that no one wanted to see the canal. So I think we just walk to the edge and just show it. Yeah. Uh, cool. Because it really, like literally no one wanted the canal. Everyone wanted to see the, the villages. But that's all right. That's all right. But we'll still show you. You know, I'm going to do a... I'll jump on this side of you. I'm going to do a, a walk at the Canal Saint Martin tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Haven't, Everyone's looking forward to that. Haven't got a guest. <laughs> no, you're right. No one wants to watch it. The guest that I had in mind uh, is famously known for pulling out at the last second. Okay. So I didn't advertise their name. And guess what? They pulled out at the last second. So it might just... smart on your part. It, yeah, I know, yeah. right? So it might just be me. And I won't reveal that guest's name. <laughs> um, but hey... Anyway, so uh, can I sum my time tomorrow? Okay. Got any ideas who I could do the walk with? Huh. Someone who knows the 10th hour on this month? Yeah, who lives in that area, up and along the canal. I don't know. So what, uh, this uh, this canal, what was it? Was it just a, like a beautiful thing, or did they use it for? I mean, yeah. you said gondolas were in it, but yeah, gondolas. They had. Um... Question from Grandma: Do they have any boats on? They do. That's a good question. Um, you can hire little rowboats, and you can row all around the the canal. In the summertime, it's packed with people rowing round. Some people row better than others, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty nice. But they don't they don't ever have like kind of I guess it would be hard to do, but kind of like regattas or something where they take nice. They do as well, yeah. They do um rowing competitions as oh, well. Nice. Yeah. There we go. You ever been out on the water? Here? Yeah. I have, yeah. I, can you No, but I, people do. <laughs> people do in the summertime. And what's this thing? <laughs> I don't know, that's the kind of wall before you head into the, the gardens of the Trianon Palace. And you can't get up into that, it's all gated off. Right, you have to go through the, the old palace. Okay, so to show you guys what we're, what we're looking to do now is we've, so we just cycled all the way down here and we're gonna go through this gate and up, assume towards this. Uh, yep, that's called the Grand Trianon. You know what Suzanne wants to know? She wants to know how deep the canal is. I actually know that, two and a half meters deep. Two and a half meters deep. Yep. So in feet, that's like eight and a half ish. Yeah, nine maybe, nine yeah. ten. Yeah, I'm doing. We're doing the. We're we're, you know, we're doing it for everybody. That's two cubits. We need <laughs> for people in the old. We system. need a metric conversion on. We do. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Just a... And a regular feature of these walk shows is I like to film the dogs that I pass. And here's a particularly beautiful one. It's a beagle. A lot of dogs in Paris. You are. So a lot That's of people uh, have this uh, thing about there being dog excrement on the pavements and the sidewalks of Paris. Do you notice that kind of thing out here in Versailles as well? I haven't noticed that. No. You'd have a lot of sheep out here though. That's true. Yeah, gotta be careful about Do you that. get other animals as well? You have cows and sheep and... Uh, take the crocodile lady on the walk show. <laughs> we all wanna know. I don't know if she'd wanna be on the camera, Ruth, uh, but thanks for that comment. So shall we cycle or walk? Uh, it might be easier to walk actually. Okay. Uh, I'll go through the big bit. So while we're doing this little walky bit, it's a good time to send you questions in for Christian. Also about coffee. This guy knows the coffee scene extremely well. I saw Brian suggested, speaking of coffee, uh, that I could do tomorrow's walk show with Nico from Holy Belly. Oh yeah. Could work. Although well, Holy Belly is so popular, I don't know if he could get away for... Oh, that's true. <laughs> So what's it like, um, what's the, what's the, I've got a question for you about coffee. What's the most common drink that people come when they come into your cafe? Uh, if they're French, um, espresso. Yeah. The French are 98% espresso drinkers. Really? Yep. Um, they like to stand at the bar and have their quick espresso in the morning. Um, if they're Australians, what do you think? I would say, <laughs> I think I know the answer. Yeah. I think it'd be a flat white. Definitely a flat white, something yep. with milk. Yep. Australians like their milk. Uh, if they're from North America, it's kind of split. Um, I'd say half flat white or cappuccino right. and half what you drink, man. Filter coffee. Filter, really good drip filter coffee. So I used to always drink the flat white, like you said, and then I made the switch to filter because, uh, well, I listened to all the coffee guys that I had on the show, like you and Paul and, and others, and they were all raving about drinking sort of coffee without milk. And uh, I got into it as well. Yep. And I always think really good filter coffee is probably the best way to, to taste everything in the coffee. Yeah. Um, not as much heat and pressure in the machine as maybe an espresso, so you really taste a lot more flavors. I want to put the camera on us for a sec because I want you to tell me something that you already told me. These guys were uh, 
Well, so Christian and Paul were among the first guests. We can still walk on the uh, on the podcast. And if you guys are watching this, you didn't know I do a podcast. You've been missing out, and you should go and rectify that immediately. Um, but I remember when uh, I first had you guys on, and you told me an interesting story, whether on air or not, about you can tell when someone walks in the front door of your cafe. Where have you got the bike? Kind of. Yeah, I'm just helping you. Out. Okay. You could tell where they were from just by the way they walked in. Can you explain that? Usually, yeah. I mean, we've been, you know, working in tourism as well for, I don't know, 13 years now. And um, you can just kind of tell by, by the look, by the, you know, if they're smiling. So what is that? Walk me through it. If someone walks in smiling, what does that mean? They're either, well, like us, they're either an Aussie or an American. Okay. Excited to be in Paris. They just woke up. They're ready for their coffee. You know, they're excited. If they're not smiling, they could be angry. Well, yeah, <laughs> European, you know, a little bit more stoic. Maybe not as excited to be in Paris. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, and then uh, what do the French people do when they walk in? Uh, they order an espresso straight away. Right. And they sit at the bar. But what, yeah. So hang on, we'll get, we'll, we put the bikes in. I quite like this, uh, this idea. So with the, I just want to get it so the sun's on us and not, you know, Okay. Closer if you want. Yeah, okay. Hang on. I'll just walk around you again. Um, hang on a sec. Apologies, guys. I just want to get the sound right. Okay, so we can hear you, but we can't see you. So what happens when a French person walks into your cafe? Like, how, Walk me through it. They step in th through the door. Do they typically say bonjour or do they... Yeah, always bonjour. Yeah. You might get a bonjour, monsieur, you know. If they're feeling particularly... Yeah. Wild. Although I still don't see myself as a monsieur, right? you know, I, you know, I think of my, my dad or something when, right. but um, bonjour monsieur, you know, and um, usually they'll just say on cafe, s'il vous plaît, a coffee please, and in France coffee means espresso, so. I like that, they just have to say on cafe and you know yeah. what I mean. Exactly. Okay, where are we? Alright, we're at the gate, at the very front of the palace of the Trianon, the Grand Trianon. Um, this is a smaller palace that Louis XV built out here in the, in the forest. And it's, it's really funny, Oliver. Um, basically, the, the main palace of Versailles was so chaotic. Again, 7,000 people in your space. Limited hygiene as well right, in right. that area. And also, all the building over the years, the, the Chateau Palace was a construction site. So to escape all that craziness, Often the, the kings would come and spend their summers out here in this smaller palace um, that actually inside looks a lot like the bigger palace, but um, there are more access to the gardens out here. There's rivers. Wow. And it's just calmer than being at the main big chateau in the center of town. But what is it now? Like, why is it all gated off like this? So it actually opens later in the afternoon. Ah, they okay. open it up for, for tours a little later um, okay. for a few hours. Um, the one really um, random fact for you is that um, everything in Versailles is French made and um, that really stimulated the economy back in the 17th century. Um, what do you mean the, everything is French made? You mean like all this kind of... Everything. Yeah. So all the furniture was, um, all the kind of building material, everything was French made. This is the one place that brought something from abroad and that's Italian marble. So. I know you're wondering that. I was one. I looked at that marble and I thought that yeah. does not look like French marble. Exactly. Yeah. If I know one thing, it's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. What, what's yeah. the, do you know the story behind it? Why did they want? I to don't know. I, I knew that um, Louis the Fifteenth wanted pink marble, and maybe they didn't have it in France at yeah, that time, right, so right, right. got it from the north of Italy. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, but I really love this place because it is so quiet out here in the forest. This beautiful old palace. The Grand or the Petit Trianon? The Grand, Grand Trianon. Yes. Uh, here you go. We've got some comments coming in as well. Jim, Jim, thanks for all your regular comments here. I'm enjoying this. Uh, although I can't see... There you go. He says, uh, Grand Trianon and Petit Trianon equals incredibly influential to architecture around France and the world. Jim, uh, Jim, I think if I remember correctly, Jim is a student of the arts. Who hmm. knows? Or maybe maybe beyond a student. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think, I think we, we've seen similar architecture to this around uh, Europe especially. What else have we got coming in? See, I still struggle with it. There you go. Uh, 
So DJ Poser says, can you live in Paris on a tour guide's wage? Touring Versailles and Paris seems like a great day of work. Corporate life in New Jersey is a drag. <laughs> what do you think? Can you live on a tour guide's wage? Uh, yeah, you can. Um, would you agree as well? I'd say, well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, as in, because I do tours as well. well you know. Um, well, I think, I think a lot of people are living on a, on a tour guide wage, so it yeah. must be doable. Yeah, I mean, in France, in general, salaries are lower than a lot of big cities around the world. Mm. Like, if you go to Berlin or London or New York, salaries are much higher. Right. Um, but um, the cost of living is, isn't that bad in Paris. That's true. Especially, I, like, compared to, I mean, forget Berlin. If you go to somewhere like Stockholm and try and yeah, buy a round absolutely. of beers, you have to get a mortgage on your house is typically how people would explain, I think, compared to France where you can go out for, a, you can get like a pint of beer for as cheap as two euros 50 in some yeah. places. Yeah, I mean, you have to know Paris quite well to do that. Um, but Paris, yeah, compared to like Scandinavia or, yeah. you know, or New London. York or San Francisco. Oslo, geez. Yeah. Um, um, there's, there's another question there, but there you go. Uh, I don't think you'll, the answer to your question, DJ Poser, geez, it's hard to, it's hard to get the comments back up. There you go. The answer to your question, DJ Poser, is you're probably going to earn more corporate life in New Jersey, but maybe have less fun. That's what I'd say, yeah. So we've got, a, uh, we've got, <laughs> we've got what could almost be described as a CV coming through from, <laughs> from Brian in, uh, in Melbourne, in uh, Somerville, actually. He says, if I was younger, I'd be over there begging for a job. You're hired. Whoa, <laughs> that was easy. So what... Uh, what got a rigorous... Uh, I, think, I think Brian likes to cycle. Process, you know? Um, keep those questions coming. Where are we going? Uh, where are we going to finish off this video? We're gonna ride over to the Petit Trianon. The Speak smaller. loud. We're gonna head over to the Petit Trianon. There you the go. Smaller of the two palaces here. And which? And so that's over this direction, I take it. It is, yeah. Okay. Um, and we're gonna actually ride by the potato guy. This potato guy. Yeah, he sells potatoes. Okay, yeah. let's go check him out. Yeah. So, uh, and that's where we. I think the plan is that's where we're gonna finish this video. So. Um, you guys that have questions about Versailles, oh my chair's fallen down. Those are guys who have questions for Christian, questions about coffee, questions about Versailles, now is the time to get them in. Uh, also questions for me. If you want to know anything about these walk shows, I'm going to answer them. Have you got any questions for me, Christian? Uh, how, was, how was Christmas in Sweden? Oh, good question. <laughs> Chris, Christmas in Sweden is a different uh, kettle of fish to Christmas in Australia. Largely because it's uh, winter over here and it's summer over there. That's true, yeah. And they have a lot more traditions in Sweden than we do in Australia. This was pretty interesting. Yeah. I haven't seen you too much since that since Christmas. That's so. true, we haven't had a good old catch up. No. See, the problem is, dear viewers and listeners, I used to go to the Peloton coffee shop, I would say, super regularly. Yeah, definitely. Maybe three times a week. Three times a week. And then I moved to Montmartre, which is on the other side of the city. And, uh, well, I can't make it three times a week to the other side of the city. So it's always a pleasure to get to hang out with Christian like this, especially when we get to... Hang on, Potato Man. Yeah. What's the deal here? Yeah, so... I'm just going to film from a distance. I guess you can't hear them. So I won't, I won't just film their conversation, but I will film their uh, potatoes. What's the deal with the potatoes, Christian? Oh, so Ming here, he makes these awesome potatoes in this old oven. Um, he's got all kinds of toppings for them. He's got bottles of wine and beers out here as well. Um, I'll tell you what, this is, yeah, this is, if you forget to kind of bring lunch with you, because we're so far away from the town now. Right. You get a bit stranded, but this is the place. So what, you get a, a, a baked potato from that oven? Yeah, you do. I'm going to have a look. Hang on, I'm going to oh, get off the bike. They're really, really good. All right, live video. Anything can happen. Was your name yeah. Ming? Was it Ming? Yeah. Oliver, nice, nice to, to meet you. you. So this is Ming, this is the oven. oven to cook the potatoes. Wow. Okay. You got a lot of potatoes in there right yes, now. No, not now because it's a quiet season. Ah, I see. And it's high season, it's before. Right. Yeah. And a different topping in it. So, uh, and, and, you, and you, you're called Parmentier, which is the... The name, the, yeah. If, do you know who Parmentier is? I know, and you? Can you tell them? Yeah, of course. Who is he? The Parmentier, Antoine Parmentier, is the man to catch the, um, the potatoes to Europe from uh, from uh, south of uh, America. So he went and so, brought the potatoes over. And, and one, one is uh, 
and uh, Louis, Louis the Fourteen, right, and help him to 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 say that save the, the the people because it's a famine, it's not a lot of people. Have so everyone was starving in yeah. France. They wanted food, and he said, yeah. he said, look, I'm my name's Parmonte. I'll mm. feed you. No, no, not exactly. He, no. <laughs> not exactly. Not really, Oliver. <laughs> Because the people, the, the people need the food. Yes. And there's a famine, so a lot of people don't, don't have the food come. And when he get the potatoes here, a lot of people saying the potatoes no good for 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 human. Yeah. It's a big, good for, right. for animals, they but not for us. Like it was and food what, for the animals. What he yeah. did, he, he he grew up on the ground, and the day have the the corner with the the gun. Right, to, right. To 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 save. The ground from what? Who were they? From the just to, 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 for the people. So and in the night, all oh, every every garden gone. Really? So the people say, if they keep, maybe it is good things. So, so they're stirring the, the, the You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like one of the first viral marketing campaigns yeah, exactly. France has ever <laughs> exactly. seen. And now everybody eats potatoes. And now you've got a job selling potatoes. Exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, and, I would love to see how many kilos. And, and, and one, one, one uh, Louis XIV uh, like the potatoes and every day have the potatoes for lunch and for dinner. Right. So you need why to have we a sign here, here that's with, the, with the history. Yeah, yeah. Right here, people would love that. Yeah. Yeah. And so why are we, we doing potatoes here? Because from the, the history of Chateau Versailles, the potatoes is something special. That's great. You okay. know, um, you said your name is Ming, is yeah, that right? Yeah. So someone is watching right now yeah. from Chicago, yeah. and they just said three cheers for Ming the Potato Man. Yeah, exactly. That's some great. people. Chicago is watching. Some, some people from your group to come in to say, Ming, hi. <laughs> and they say, oh, you were very famous because we saw the video from the bike about yeah. and, and knowing him, I'm going to have the potatoes. Yeah. That's great. Well, now you're on the Earful Tower film podcast. Okay. There's 20 people watching you from Fiji, England, okay. America, nice. and Australia. You got any words for them? <laughs> Just how we well. always uh, famous here, actually. A lot to the local people, the, the every um, yeah. You know and what? The trip by Walzer or the yeah. people do the, the, the like. There you go. I recommend you visit Ming. He's a very friendly guy. <laughs> and one last thing about potatoes. I think your potatoes are beeping. Something's yeah. beeping. Don't yeah. let them burn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. But I, I heard that at Palmonte's grave in the Père Lachaise, people yeah. go and put potatoes on it. Yeah. Have yeah. you done that before? No. Not no. yet. <laughs> not yet. Well, you want to cook the potatoes, <laughs> not put them on a grave. Well, nice to meet you, Ming. Yeah, me too. Have a Have lovely a good day. One. See, See you Ming. next. Okay. Yeah. Follow the Earful Tower, Ming. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. You never know what's going to happen on the Earful Tower walk show. That's what we always say. Bye. 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 Okay. But yeah, it's true. You're out here in the forest. You get hungry. What do you do? You get a potato. You know. Are we, we going to ride again or are we going to walk? We can ride. Okay. Bumpy, Forgive us for the bumps we're going. Uh, if anyone was putting any comments on there, I missed them all. Uh, we got a question from Brian for you, Lena. For me? Yeah. All right. Do you want to come and do you want to come and cycle with me while while? Uh... Oh my God. Oh, me too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, Brian says, what's okay. Lena's impression of Versailles? Oh, yeah, very, very good. Come cycle next to me. Wait, I, can't, I can't cycle and talk. Okay. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is better. It's better now. Okay, yes, good. Uh, yes, I think it is really, really good, especially... Come on, I mean, come I've only come been here um, in the summer before, in high season. And it was so, so hot and so many people and... Just queues for every kiosk, and it was it was kind of overwhelming. And now it's like empty, and you almost get it to yourself, and it feels very um, almost private. And we're very fortunate because the sun is shining, <laughs> and we got a private tour guide. That was that was what I was angling towards. <laughs> we got Christian from Bike About Tours. You guys who are just tuning in, because I do see that uh, numbers are popping up and down every now and again, it means people have missed the whole tour. No. But we're with Christian from Bike About Tours. The link is in the description below. And his, uh, him and Paul's company send groups out here all the time, especially in the uh, summer months. And as, as I think you can see, it's a pretty good way to, to visit Versailles on bikes. That's another thing I was going to say. Last time we walked, yeah. and this is way better. I've got a strong feeling my parents came out here maybe 30 years ago and said the same thing. Yeah. 
that you know if only I think they said if only bike about tours existed. <laughs> had been invented. Look, Christian, we're matching outfits. I know. I was thinking that. Yeah. If you guys both cycle ahead of me, I can film your matching outfits. So you guys probably can't hear them. That, that's up there chiming 12 o'clock, meaning that we've been going for almost an hour, I suppose. And also meaning that we're gonna wind up this, uh, this live video. I hope it's not too bumpy for you because it sure is bumpy for us. And this is where we're gonna finish, isn't it, Christian? Ooh, uh. Okay, so maybe you can tell us a bit about this place. Well, just firstly, the, um, the Grand Trianon that we saw a minute ago, the bigger one, um, that's what they kind of, what we nickname anyway, the Boys Club. Okay. And it's because all the men from, from the palace would go out there to kind of hang out and play billiards, go hunting, and all the rest, things that men did, I guess, back then. Um, the one behind us, the Petit Trianon. There's a tractor, we need to move away yeah, sorry. From. Big tractor coming. I should show the tractor too, so you don't think that I'm just making this up. There you go. That's how you know you're out. That's how you know you're out of Paris when there's big tractors going by. Big one, this one, yeah. Um, but yeah, the Petit Canon, which is here, um, this was actually a gift to Marie Antoinette, the famous queen. Um, she didn't do so well when she came to France. Um, I don't know if you know the story. No. No. Um, well, she was 14 when they arranged her marriage to Louis the Sixteenth, um, and you know where she was from, right? She was from Austria. Austria, yeah. And um, the French and the Austrians have been at war for decades. And there was kind of a peace treaty between the two countries. And Marie Antoinette and Louis XVI were married to kind of to do that. Right. Um, anyway, she struggled coming to Versailles, this huge court, 7,000 people in the, in the palace. And she was the enemy, really. Everyone hated her because she was Austrian. Mm. Um, she had a very interesting nickname as well. This gives you an idea of how much she was hated. Um, you know how to say Austrian and French? Uh, tell me. L'Autrichienne. Right. L'Autrichienne. That's how you say Austrian and French. But you know how you could also say it? Tell the me. same thing? Tell me. L'Autrichienne. Ah, like the, the other dog? The other... Oh, as in female dog. The other bitch, basically. L'Autrichienne. So that was the play on words and they used it a lot. Um, so as she... in like that other bitch. Right, exactly. Like that. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, what, language alert. Yep, sorry. Okay, yeah. done. Explicit, yeah. yeah. Um, but that's how much she was kind of hated when she came. All of that she wasn't used to. She came from kind of a more rural kind of vibe in Austria, and she always wanted to get away from that. So um, her husband, Louis XVI, gifted her this small chateau, which is really beautiful on the inside, and also beautiful gardens behind it. So she kind of had this little retreat away from the palace and away from all that attention as well. So this is, um, so when she wanted, to, I, I should show it a little bit better. So when she wanted to get away from, uh, Oh, there's a nice little hole to put the camera as well. Perfect. So when she wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle, she came down to this uh, little chateau over here. Yep, and it's quite deep. It goes back quite far, you know, so it is really beautiful. She had her own music room. She played the harpsichord and the harp um, at that time. She had a theater. She liked to perform. I can um, see someone walking in. They're shutting the windows. It's the ghost of Marie Antoinette. Did you see that? I'll have to watch the replay there. Or maybe there's staff in there. It's probably stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> or a tourist that got locked in there. Yeah, like. <laughs> Tell me though, are there? Uh, do you hear stories about uh, ghosts of um, of uh, kings and queens gone by? Um, no. Good question. No, you don't. <laughs> I guess that's a no. No, there's, but, um, there's so many tours out here. There probably is a ghost tour at Versailles. But, mm, uh, no, that's a good idea. idea. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to sign off now, uh, unless you've got some more some more fact bombs to throw at us that you haven't chucked in yet. No, I mean, unless you have any other questions. But, um, okay, guys, you've got about one minute to get your last questions in. I'll stand on your right just in case the microphone's no good. Okay. But we'll, uh, we're, we'll start signing off now. I'm going to do what I always do, promote you, Christian. If you guys, <laughs> I saw Brian said he's looking forward to having his Peloton coffee in... When are you coming, Brian? In... Uh, I can't see the comments. There you go. In July, Brian's coming in July. Oh, so, awesome! So That's mention that you saw him. Uh, mention that you saw Christian on this uh, trip, and he'll take extra special care of you, right? Yep. yep. There you go. Extra sugar in his coffee or something right. like that. Uh, Jim says we're at the Bike About Tours website now. Great deals! We'll definitely take a tour when we're there in the oh, next year. What a great publicity that is. That's, That's great. great. <laughs> Jim, Thanks, uh, you're my hero there, Jim. Uh, are the gates made from gold? Says Suzanne. 
No, they're not. They're painted with a, well, kind of a um, metallic paint that makes them look gold. Um, random fact though, in Paris is only two places that have real gold because there's a lot of golden gates in Paris. Have you seen these? Yeah. I have, yeah. Um, on top of Napoleon's tomb, you know, the Invalide Dome. Yep, yep, yep. So that's actually real gold. That's, so that's the big dome down on the left bank on the 7th Baron. Just yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. Um, I had a person on the bike tour once asked me that if anyone gets up and tries to chip it off, yeah. but um, I didn't have an answer. No. Um, uh, or an alibi for the other night exactly, when the totally. gold went missing. Sorry. I saw some more comments. Last one uh, that I saw was from DJ Poser. He'll be coming by in May and stopping at the Peloton Coffee for a cafe for coffee and waffles. Had a good day That's awesome. watching That's this, great. he said. A few nice comments, all these people saying thank you. Um, there's another question for you, but I want to get back. While we're saying thank you, I said it in the last video, but I'm going to stress it again. You guys are saying thanks. I also want to say thanks to the Patreon supporters of this show who, uh, without their support, I would have given up a long time ago. And thanks to their generosity for letting me do videos like this live for free. That's great. Because usually this awesome. is all behind the paywall. So thanks, you guys. And I know a lot of the names that have been coming up are Patreon supporters. And thanks to you, Christian for doing this uh, lovely tour for us. My pleasure. In the links below, there's Bike About Tours, there's a Peloton Cafe, and there's everything you need to know. And I think that pretty much sums it up, right? That's great. We'll do the next one in, um, in Champagne. That'd That's exactly what yeah. I want to do. You guys, uh, keep those positive comments, share this, and uh, judging on its success, I think they'll, uh, they'll take think me out on the Champagne tour. That'd be great. <laughs> and there was a question from Jim that we can sort of wind up on, is what do you do if it rains? Ooh, good tour? question. Um, We've got a few plan B's in Versailles. I mean, the good news is there's all these beautiful buildings that we can enter. Um, we've got great ponchos as well, very sexy ones. Yeah. Um, so what, there is yeah, exactly, <laughs> kind of glorified garbage bags, but they yeah. work. Um, but yeah, there are some plan B's. There are some more covered areas. Um, we'll go in a lot more of these outer buildings and um, tour a lot more of that. So there is kind of a plan B in Versailles. Um, the picnic we actually, um, which we usually have on the tour, we do at a cafe. Um, so there is kind of a rainy day itinerary as well. What about uh, something that we that I should stress? The ride that we just did isn't the exact uh, route or route that you no, guys that's do. No, that's just a small, small part. How, what, what did we miss? Like, I mean, you don't want to give away your tour, but I mean. No, I mean we ride um, a bit. We ride all through the town of Versailles, which is in front of the chateau, and that's one thing a lot of people don't do when they come out. They go straight to the palace, and they miss this really great town. Um, we visit the local food market. Um, and we ride at the end of the canal, we do a picnic. So there's several different things, yeah. And you also do tours in the Marais uh, and uh, elsewhere? Yep, the, the Paris one, yeah, that goes through the Latin Quarter in the Marais. And, so there you go. If yeah. you're going to come to Paris, if full disclosure, I'm not sponsored by these guys. <laughs> I actually just really like them. I think they're doing a good thing. If you want to rent a bike in Paris, do it with these guys. Have a coffee at Peloton. You might even meet me there. Uh, should we make him go for a ride as a fade out? That's a really good idea. Yeah. You should ride off into, into the, the sunset, distance yeah. as we fade out. But I think Lena should come in and say farewell as well. I will. <laughs> Here's lovely Lena in the oh. middle of us. Any last thoughts oh, on Versailles? Oh, it's just beautiful. I can't wait to see even more. And we might go inside. Yeah, we might do that. I've never been now. inside. Yeah. So. so check out on uh, the Eiffel Tower's Instagram account, I think. I'll do a little bit of filming around if we do indeed do that. But Christian, uh, shake my hand, my friend. Thank you for the tour today. Merci there he beaucoup. is, Christian Osborne. <laughs> Cycle off into the distance okay. and I'll fade out to black. <laughs> How far do I need to ride? <laughs> no, <laughs> Just keep I'll yell to you when I stop. Okay. You guys, thanks for watching today. It's been a pleasure having your comments, especially uh, as an Australian, seeing all these Australian names pop up. Say goodbye to Christian. There he goes. Off into the sunset, if I can. There you go. Keep going, Christian, you're looking great. I'm not gonna tell him that I've <laughs> turned it off. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Tomorrow